Good day, everyone. Today, I will be discussing to you the environmental education, which is the title of your module 11 here in NSTP1. I am Charisse Michael Lemon from the College of Teacher Education. Before we start the main lesson, I want us to have first a brief introduction about environmental education. Okay. So here in module 11, we will discuss or it focuses on environmental education, environmental resources, types of resources, problems and causes of depletion of resources, environmental degradation, pollution, types of pollutants, the four R's of waste management, ecological solid waste management act of 2000 and different environmental laws. Here are the learning objectives. At the end of this module, students, you are expected to define environmental education, know the different types of resources, know the effect of environmental degradation, give the problem and causes of depletion of resources, identify the types of pollutants, know the basic provision of Ecological Waste Management Act of 2000, and lastly, is to give different environmental laws. Education on environmental management. It is important because community development efforts will not be complete without any attempt on it. We have all heard that refrain that our obligation as a society is to leave behind a better world for our children. In a world that will be inherited by our children. So it would be seem that the best way to ensure a better, healthier planet is to equip today's youth with the knowledge and leadership skills to meet tomorrow's environmental challenges. And this requires parents and teachers collaborating and taking an active role in educating the next generation. Our commitment to providing children with an environmental education will help them become res um, environmental citizen that will be thought leaders for tomorrow. So nurturing a respect for nature and all living things is an imperative that both parents and teachers can convey to their children. Parents can do this by supporting and encouraging attitudes at home and at school that emphasize the importance of environment, environmental education. And the people in the community must be taught how to manage their environment so that the community will be a better place to live in. Yes, environmental education promotes a sense of place and connectedness through community involvement. So when a student decides to learn more about the environmental education and how to improve their environment, they reach out to our community experts donors, volunteers, and local facilities to help them bring the community together to understand and address environmental issues impacting their neighborhood. The aim in environmental education is to mold an environmentally literate and responsible citizenry. Environmental education. It is a process of teaching, learning, and helping people to acquire understanding, skills and values that make them active and informed citizens for the development and maintenance of the ecological, sustainable, and socially just society. Environmental education connects us to the world around us, teaching us about both natural and built environments. Environmental education raises awareness of issues impacting the environment upon which we all depend as we as well as actions we can take to improve and sustain. So whether we bring nature into our classroom or take our students outside to learn or find impromptu teachable moments on a nature walk with their families, environmental education has many benefits for youth, educators, schools, and communities. So let's move on now to the types of resources. First one here is the renewable resources are those who are essentially inexhaustible such as the sun wind waves tides and managed forests 
So when we say a renewable resources, this means an energy that is sustainable, something that can run out, such as the sun. Okay, so first one here is the solar energy. It is a sunlight in one's planet, most abundant and freely available energy resources. The amount of the solar energy that reaches the Earth's surface in an hour is more than the planet's total energy requirements for a full year. Secondly is the wind energy. So wind is a plentiful source of clean energy. The term wind energy and wind power both describe the process by which the wind is used to generate mechanical power or electricity. This mechanical power can be used for specific tasks such as grinding grains or pumping water or a generator can convert this me mechanical power into electricity. So some of the most recent developments are here in the Philippines are the Bangui Wind Farm, Burgos Wind Farm, and Caparaspisan Wind Farm in Ilocos Norte. The wind energy power system in Oriental Mindoro. San Lorenzo Wind Farm in Guimaras, Navas Wind Farm in Aklan, and Pililla Wind Farm in Rizal. So, third one is the hydro energy. As a renewable energy resource, hydropower is one of the most commercially developed. By building a dam or a barrier, a large reservoir can be used to create control the flow of water that will drive a turbine generating electricity and this energy source can often be more reliable than the solar or wind power especially if it's tidal rather than river so, and also allows electricity to be stored for use then demand reaches a peak So, class, ito yung tsuka ng turbine. Yan. Okay? So, next tayo sa pang-apat, tidal energy. Tidal energy is a renewable energy powered by the natural rise and fall of ocean tides and currents. Some of these technologies include turbines and paddles. So, ito, yung nandito sa flinash ko sa screen class, yan yung example ng turbine. Okay? For most tidal energy generators, turbines are placed in tidal streams. A tidal stream is a fast-flowing body of water created by tides, and a turbine is a machine that takes energy from a flow of fluid. So next one is the geothermal energy. Geothermal energy is a heat within the earth. It is contained in the rocks and fluids beneath the earth's crust, and can be found as far down to the Earth's hot molten rock magma. So, natural na init po ng planeta natin. Okay? So, people can capture geothermal energy through, first, geothermal power plants, which use to heat from deep inside the Earth to generate stream to make electricity. So, wells, alam yun, balon, okay, are drilled one or two miles deep into the earth to pump steam or hot water to the surface and you're most likely to find one of these power plants in an area that has a lot of hot springs, geysers, or volcanic activity because these are places where the earth is particularly hot just below the surface. And um, ganito yung process class. Um, okay, so nakikita nyo dyan, wait, dito sa picture number one, geothermal power plant, there are two wells that being, being drilled, so that is one or two miles deep. So, yan. Ang mainit na tubig ay pinapump mula sa ilalim ng lupa sa pamamagitan ng isang balon sa ilalim ng mataas na presyon. And kapag umabot ang tubig sa ibabaw ng presyon, ay nahuhulog na siya ang sanhi ng tubig ay maging singaw. At ang singaw na yan ay umiikot dito sa number 3, yung turbine, okay, na konektado sa isang generator na gumagawa ng kuryente. Tapos, ang singaw ay, kapag ang singaw ay lumamig na, okay, dahil sa isang cooling tower, at umiikli pabalik sa tubig, 
Yan. Ang pinalamig na tubig ay ibobomba ulit dito sa number 4. Yan. Yan yung cooling tower. Ibobomba ulit pabalik sa loob ng lupa upang muling simulan yung process. So, uulitin lang din nila kung ano yung ginawa nilang una. Okay? And then, the third one is the biomass energy. This is the conversion of solid fuel made from plant materials into electricity. Although, fundamentally, biomass involves burning organic materials to produce electricity. This is not burning wood, ha? And nowadays, this is much cleaner and more energy-efficient process by converting agricultural, industrial, and domestic waste into solid, liquid, and thus fuel. Biomass generates power at much lower economical and environmental cost. So, tignan natin itong nasa picture number 2. Nakikita natin, ito yung mga biomass sources class. Una nito, agricultural crops and residues. Yung mga napagdalagan ng mga matis and yung mga iba pa. Yung mga agricultural crops and residues. And then, next one is the sewage. Yung mga dumi ng tao, pwede ding dumi ng mga um, animals or hayop. Yan, ginagawa nilang solid. Okay? Tapos, pwede din yung mga municipal solid waste. Ano ba yung mga municipal solid waste? Mga maya, matatalakay natin yun. Pero ngayon, bibigyan ko na kayo ng sneak peek. Yung mga municipal solid waste na yan, class, yung mga dumi na usually nahahakot from one community. Yung mga um, household, household uh, garbage or waste natin. Yan. Okay? Pwede din naman yung mga health center, health center um, waste Yan, okay? Industrial residues and forestry crops and residues. So, next type of resources is the potentially renewable resources. Are those resources that can last indefinitely without reducing the available supply because this is displaced more rapidly through natural processes that are non-renewable resources? So, itong potentially renewable class can be renewable if we do not consume them faster than they can be replaced. So, ayan, it can be replenished fairly um, rapidly from hours to several decades, okay, through natural processes. Examples of such potentially renewable resources are includes forest trees, grassland, grasses, wild animals, fresh lake and ocean water, ground water or yung tubig bukal na sinasabi, fresh air and fertile soil. The third types of resources is the non-renewable resources. These are referred to as exhaustible resources. So, there are four major types of non-renewable resources class. These are oil, natural gas, coal, and nuclear energy. Oil Natural gas and coal are collectively called fossil fuels. So, fossil fuels were formed within the earth from dead plants and animals over millions of years. Hence, the name fossil fuels. So, they are found in the underground layer of rocks and sediments. Pressure and heat work together to transform the plant and animal remains into a crude oil are also known as petroleum, coal, and natural gas. Okay? So, we will proceed now with its problem and causes. So, certain problems were not noted in connection with depletion of resources. First one here, possible climate change from global warming. Global warming class is a phenomenon of climate change characterized by general increase in average temperature of the earth, which modifies the weather balances and ecosystems for a long time. It is directly linked to the increase of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere, worsening the greenhouse effect. And this greenhouse effect is a natural phenomenon. However, the increase in greenhouse gases is linked to human activities. And it is thus no surprise that the world's leading climate scientists believe that the human activities are very likely the main cause of global warming since the mid-20th century. 
and mostly because of first deforestation or illegal na pagpupukol ng mga puno sa mga kabataan. Intensive farming, mining, and overconsumption of our natural resources. Second, possible climate change from acid rain. Okay? Acid rain is caused by a chemical reaction that begins when compounds like sulfur oxide and nitrogen oxides are released into the air. And these substances can rise very high into the atmosphere where they mix together and react together with the water, oxygen, and other chemicals to form from a acidic pollutant known as acidic rain. Okay. Um, third, depletion of stratosphere zone. Scientists also discovered that the thinning of the ozone layer was caused by increasing concentration of ozone depleting chemicals such as chlorofluorocarbons or CFC compound which with chlorine and or fluorine attached to a carbon and to a lesser extent halons similar compounds with bromine or iodine. So, ganito kasi, ganito kasi yung class. Yung merong layers ang uh, atmosphere natin. So, una dyan is yung troposphere. Um, it starts with the Earth's surface and extends 8 to 14.5 kilometers high. And this part of atmosphere is the most dense and almost weather in this region. So, ito lang Earth, tapos ang susunod yung troposphere. Yan yung pinakaunang uh, layer dito sa Earth's atmosphere. Sumusunod dyan yung stratosphere na start just above the troposphere and extend about 50 kilometers or 31 miles high and the ozone layer which absorbs and scatter the solar ultraviolet radiation in this layer. Tapos sumunod din class yung mesosphere, the third layer of the Earth and the mesosphere start, starts just above the stratosphere and extend to 85 kilometers or 53 miles high in which meteor burns up in this layer. At saka yung susunod naman is yung thermosphere. Thermosphere starts just above the mesosphere and extends to 600 kilometers or 372 miles high from mesosphere. And Aurora and satellites occur in this layer. So, yung mga nakikita nating video na Aurora Borealis from um, Northern, yung Northern Lights class na sinatawag nating Aurora Borealis na nangyayari sa Iceland. So, yan. Usually, dyan nang gaganap yung Aurora and satellites. Okay? Sa last na is yung Susunod class is yung ionosphere. Ito yung pinakala, uh, hindi pa pala, hindi pinakala. Okay? Second to the last, na abundant layer of electrons and ionized atoms and molecules that stretches from about 48 kilometers above the surface to the edge of space at the 965 kilometer overlapping into the mesosphere and thermosphere. And yung last class na layer ng atmosphere natin is yung exosphere. This is the upper limit. And it extends from the top of thermosphere up to 10,000 km or 6,200 miles. So imagine class, kung itong third depletion of stratosphere zone is nangyayari due to human activities din. So talagang mahalagang, mahalagang pag-aralan natin yung environmental education to be aware of what are we doing and what is our activity can contribute to our environment. So, ayan. So, susunod class yung urban air pollution number four. Five, non-reliance and pollution precaution. Ayan. And lastly, is the exponentially growing depletion of non-renewable minerals and depletion and contamination of groundwater and many more. Let us move on to the nine root causes of key environmental problems. First one here is poverty. Poverty among people puts stress on the environment, whereas environmental problems cause severe suffering to the poor. And 
people, whether they are rich or poor, consume water, food, and natural resources in order to remain alive. And all economic activities are directly, indirectly, or remotely based on natural resources. And any pressure on natural resources can cause environmental stress. Environmental damage can prevent people, especially the poor, from having a good hygienic living standards. As poor people rely more directly on the environment than the rich for their survival, they are mostly on the receiving ends of environmental problems. Second is overpopulation. In general, overpopulation growth plays a key role in environmental sustainability and it can lead to the deforestation, water pollution, and air pollution. These have a negative effect on the environment and also impact on human daily lives. Third one is the overconsumption of resources, especially by the affluent. The fundamental effect of overconsumption is the reduction in the planet's capacity. So excessive unsustainable consumption will exceed long-term carrying capacity of its environment. Ecological overshoot and subsequent resource depletion. Environmental environmental degradation and reduced ecosystem. Four, resource waste. Waste is not only an environmental problem, but also an economic loss. Okay? The amount of waste we generate closely linked to our consumption and production patterns. The sheer number of products entering the market possess yet another challenge. Demographic changes like an increase in the number of one person household also affect the amount of waste energy or waste to generate. Okay, so for example, packaging goods in smaller units. Kasi madami ng tao, overpopulated tayo. In a one household, how many yung, how many yung person doon? Tapos ilan tayong nagpukonsume? Siyempre, madami din yung nakukonsume natin. And that will lead to the, maapektuhan din yung demand and supply class in which yung packaging ng foods is magiging smaller. So, hindi lang siya environmental problem but also an economic loss. Kasi tayong mga consumer, tayong mga bumibili at gumagamit na mga produktong ito, eh, mas maliit yung, yung um, nakukuha natin kumpara kung hindi sana overpopulated ang mundo ngayon, eh, di sana um, mas marami per isang tao ang makukonsumo niya na produkto. So, ganun yan, class. And fifth one here, loss of biodiversity through oversimplification of Earth's life support system. Okay, biodiversity is the diversity life on Earth. It is essentially to the healthy functioning of ecosystem. Habitat loss and overexploitation driven by our rapid population growth and unsustainable consumption patterns are the primary causes of biodiversity loss which is now happening up to 10,000 times faster than 4 million of years before. Okay. And six. Widespread use of environmental damaging fossil fuels, especially oil and coal. Seven, man's urge to dominate and control nature of own use. Eight, failure to encourage earth-sustaining forms of economic development and discourage earth-degrading form of economic growth. And lastly, is the failure to have market prices represents the overall environmental cost of an economic goods of services. So these are the nine root causes of key environmental problems. Now let's talk about environmental degradation. Pollution refers to any undesirable change in the physical, chemical, or biological characteristics of air, water, soil, and or force that threatens the health, survival capability, or activities of human and other living organisms. 
and a pollutant refers to an impurity or contaminant which may be a solid, liquid, or gaseous byproducts or waste produced when a resource is extracted, processed, or used. Pollution is the introduction of harmful materials into the environment, and these harmful materials are called pollutants. Pollutants can be natural, such as volcanic ash. They can also be created by human activities, such as trash, throwing a trash, or runoff produced by factories, gaseous, yung mga yan. Pollutants damage the quality of air, water, and land. There are two types of pollution sources. First one here is the point sources. Refer to a single identifiable sources such as the smoke, stock, or a power plant of a power plant, the drain pipe of a meat packing plant, or the exhaust pipe on an automobile. So when we say point source pollution, it is very easy to identify. As the name suggests, it comes from a single place. None um Number two here is the non-point sources, it refers to dispersed and often hard to find resources. So non-point source pollution is harder to identify and harder to address. It is a pollution that comes from many places all at once. Factories and power plants can be a source of point source pollution, affecting both air and water. Smokestacks may spool carbon monoxide heavy metal, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, or particulate matter, small particles into the air. Municipal waste water treatment plants are another common source of point source pollution. So, easy to identify. When we say non-point source pollution, this it includes excess fertilizer, herbicides, and insecticides from agricultural lands and residential areas, oil, grease, and toxic chemicals from urban runoff and energy production, sediment from improperly managed construction sites, crops and forest lands, and eroding stream banks. Now it's time to talk about the different types of pollutants. First one here is the air pollution. This refers to the undesirable changes in the physical and chemical characteristics of the air. And the sources of modern air pollutants are familiar. A leading source is the internal combustion. So sometimes, air pollution is visible. A person can see a dark smoke pour from the exhaust pipe of large trucks or factories, for example, okay, so more often, however, air pollution is invisible. Polluted air can be dangerous, even if the pollutants are invisible. It can make people's eyes burn and make them have difficulty in breathing. Paghinga, okay? Tapos, it can also increase the risk of lung cancer. Natural disaster can also cause air pollution to increase quickly. Can I mga natural disasters na yun, ma'am? Okay, first example here. When a volcano erupts, they eject volcanic ashes and gases into the atmosphere, and, which is very dangerous sa health ng isang tao. Volcanic ash can discolor the sky for even months. An example of this is the eruption of the Albolkin volcano in Batangas, Philippines on January 12, 2020. It was a magmatic eruption from its main crater that spewed ashes across Calabarzon, Metro Manila, and some parts of Central Luzon and Ilocos Region, resulting in the suspension of classes, work, schedules, and flights in the area. In the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or Philbox, subsequently issued an alert level 4 in, in indicating that hazardous explosive eruption is possible within hours to days. So, yan class yung balita no, na marami ang lilikas din kasi nga kung hindi sila maglilikas, maapektuhan yung kanilang kalusugan. Lalo na yung mga malapit lang sa Taal Volcano, yung mga naninirahan doon. So, by January 26, Philvox observed an inconsistent but decreasing volcanic activity in Taal and prompting the agency to downgrade its warning to alert level 3. 
It was until February 14 when the field walks finally decided to downgrade the volcanic vol volcano's warning to alert level 2 due to its degrading volcanic activity. Okay, sorry class. Dapat talaga volcano yun, pero na-mispronounce ko volcanic daw. Pero volcano talaga yung class ha. Okay. Para naman matawa din kayo. Okay, so volcanic gases such as sulfur dioxide can kill nearby residents and make soil infertile for how many years? Okay, so yan naman yung isang um, uh, napaka-dangerous na effect ng natural, natural disaster sa ating air napupulyot hindi lang yung air natin, pati din yung land or yung soil, yung kalupaan. The cars and factories produce other common pollutants including nitrogen oxide, sulfur dioxide, and hydrocarbons. Air pollutants such as nitrogen oxide and sulfur oxide diode mix with moisture, they change into acids, and then they fall back to earth as an acid rain. Wind often carries acid rain far from a far pollution source. Okay. Another example here, class, is greenhouse gases. Another source of air pollution. So, when we say greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and methane occur naturally in the atmosphere. In fact, they are necessary for the life on Earth and they absorb sunlight reflected from Earth, preventing it from escaping into the space. But by trapping heat in the atmosphere, they keep Earth warm enough for people to live. And this is called the greenhouse effect. Pero nasabi ko din ata kanina na due to human activity, um, yung greenhouse effect is na i-increase pa dahil sa mga ozone depletion chemicals na yung concentration masyadong mataas yung mga ginagamit ng tao. Kaya naapektuhan yung atmosphere natin. Yan. Human activities such as burning fossil fuels and destroying forests have increased the amount of greenhouse effect. Ito yung mga activities na sinasabi ko. Plus, burning um, fossil fuels tapos um, destroying forests such as illegal logging. So, yan. Nakaka-apekt um, nakakapagdagdag sa greenhouse effect nakakapagdagdag ng amount sa greenhouse gases sa ating atmosphere. Second types of pollutants is water pollution. And this is the change in water quality which causes an adverse effect in the beneficial use of the water. It occurs when water contains more harmful bacteria and poisonous chemicals than it can naturally get rid of. Some polluted water looks muddy. Alam nyo yun yung makutik. Smells bad and has a garbage floating in it. And some polluted water looks clean but is filled with harmful chemicals you can see or smell. So polluted water is unsafe for drinking and swimming. Hindi po safe swimming at pagswimingan dahil maaring mag-cause din yan ng skin cancer, skin diseases, okay? Sometimes, polluted water harms people indirectly. They get sick because the fish that live in polluted water are unsafe to eat. They have too many pollutants in their flesh. So, hindi lamang tao yung naapektuhan ng class. Pag sinabi natin water pollution, hindi lamang sa inuming pantubig natin at kapag sa swisumingan or pagliliguan, kundi pati na rin yung mga um, marine uh, creatures such as yung mga fish, pati sila apektado din. Kasi kung ano yung nasa water, yun yun naman basically yung inakain nila. And yung mga pollutants na yun nag stay sa katawan nila. Siyempre, itong mga kinakain nating isda, indirectly, naapektuhan din yung kalusugan natin. Kasi, meron na din silang nakahin na pollutants. Okay? Another example of water pollutions are mining and drilling. And also contribute to water pollution like acid mine drainage or yung AMD. 
it is a major contributor to pollution of rivers and streams near coal mines. Another example is the oil spill. Next is buried chemical waste. Can also pollute water supplies. Sewage that has not been properly treated as a common sources of water pollution. Plus, tong sewage, no, ito yung parang imbahan, yung mga tubig, yung mga dumi, na isang komunidad. Diyan nila tinatawon lahat. So, ayan. Uh, Improper treatment of a common source pollution sewage. Next, a major source of water pollution is a fertilizer used in agriculture. Hey ma'am, agriculture, di ba dapat sa lupa yun? Ito. Yung fertilizer kasi na ina-add natin sa soil, pag umulan yan, nababaha, napupunta lang din na agad yung large amount na yan ng elements of nitrogen and phosphorus na dapat itumutulong sa pag-grow at paglaki ng mga tanim natin yung mga crops, syempre kapag umulan class, nawawash away yung mga fertilizer na yan doon sa stream and lakes. Another cause of water pollution. And there are nitrogen phosphorus that causes cyanobacteria to form in harmful algal blooms. And another, last uh, ana, last Contributor dito sa water pollution, yung simple garbage lang na binabato natin or tinatapon sa mga dagat or sa karagatan. Ayan. At yung simple garbage. Sabi ko nga, hindi lamang tao, hindi lamang yung tubig yung mapupulihot, pati din yung mga marine creatures na pwede natin kain, yung mga sikita na nandun, yung mga turtle, kung nakakita nyo yung mga balita noon, yung turtle may naisingit pa na straw sa kanyang ilong. So, pati yung life nila at risk din once na na-pollute yung water. The third type of pollutant is the land or soil. It refers to the change in soil composition and properties which in turn causes unfavorable effects on the quality and quantity of the living organism that it supports. So, many of some pollutants that foul to the water also harm the land. Okay? Mining sometimes leaves the soil contaminated with dangerous chemicals. Pesticides and fertilizers. Yan, naging example ko din kanina siya doon sa water pollution. So, parehas lang kung anong nakakapag-pollute sa land, ganun din sa water. So, fertilizers from agricultural, agricultural fields are blown by the wind or either naiwawash away through the rain. They can harm plants, animals, and sometimes people, tayo mga tao. Some fruits and vegetables absorb the pesticide that help them grow. When people consume the fruits and vegetables, the pesticides enter our bodies and some Pesticides can cause cancer and other diseases. Kaya nga, magmari tayong magtaka na ang mga tao noon, raw, yung mga kinakain nila, wala pang fertilizer noon. Pero ngayon, nakapag-invento ang mga tao ng fertilizer, pang tulong para sa pagpalaki, paglabo ng mga panin. Pero mas madami ding mga sakit or diseases ang na-discover. Dahil yan sa effect ng mga ito. Pero noon, yung sa unang panahon, eh, makikita mo, mas mahaba pa yung span ng life nila. Okay? So, trash in another form of land, in another form of land pollution around the world, such as paper, cans, glass, jars, plastic products, and junk cars and appliances, mark the landscape. So, Litter makes it difficult for plants and other producers in the food web to create nutrients. Animals can die if they have mistakenly eat a plastic. Inefficient garbage collection also is a, another factor on a system that contributes to land pollution. Here are some other forms of disposal. First one here is the open dumping. Okay? Solid waste is compacted and dumped 
on a dump site, open dumps are discouraged or illegal in any urban areas. Open dumping is prohibited class. An open dumping is defined as a land disposal site at which solid waste are disposed in a manner that does not protect the environment and are susceptible to open burning and are exposed to the elements, vectors, and even the scavengers, as you can see here in the picture or dito sa screen class. Okay. Many scavengers get here because of yung isang root cause kanina, overpopulation, tsaka poverty. So, dito sila nangangalakal, pero hindi rin safe yan sa kalusugan ng tao. Kaya nga illegal class prohibited to. Open dumping can include solid waste disposal facilities or practices that pose a reasonable probability of adverse effects on health of the environment. So, naghalo-halo na dyan lahat, lahat na ng solid na waste natin. Mga plastic bags, mga ano, plastic wrapper, bottle of water, um, yung mga bottle ng iba-ibang produkto, yung mga dishwashing liquid, and many more. So, dyan, sa open dump, open dumping, dyan, tinatapin lahat. Pero, prohibited yan, class ha, prohibited. <clears throat> Second is the sanitary landfill. Solid waste is compacted and buried in a huge open pit. Garbage is buried in landfills and sometimes communities produce so much garbage that their landfills are filling up. Umaapaw na class. And they are running out of place to dump their trash. So, a massive landfill near Quezon City, Philippines was the site of land pollution tragedy in the year 2000. Okay? Hundreds of people live in the slopes of Quezon City landfill. These people made their living from recycling and selling items found in the landfill or scavenging, simply term scavenging, pupulot ng mga basura pag bebenta sa mga junk shop. However, the landfill was not secure. Okay? Heavy rains caused a trash landslide, killing many people. Eh. Okay? In the year 2000 yan. So, it's not safe. Lalo na kapag na-fill out or na-fill up na lahat dun sa landfill, nag-uumapaw yan. Kagaya ngayon, um, panahon ng mga sakuna, yan, mga bagyo. Siyempre, Hindi lang ikaw na malapit na naninirahan sa sanitary landfill na yan ang maapektuhan. Pati yung mga nasa susunod pang komunidad, sa mga kapitbahay na komunidad pa ninyo, maapektuhan din. Babalik din yung mga basura na tinapon nila. So yung nga basura mo, babalik din sa sa'yo, sabi nga nila. The third form of disposal is incineration. Solid waste can be incinerated. A variety of types of incinerators exist, including cement kilns, boilers or furnaces, and commercial incinerators. Incineration serves as waste management as a way to treat waste through controlled burning. Burning is a very effective method of reducing the volume of weight of a solid waste. Through it, it is a source of greenhouse gas emissions. In the Philippines is the first and thus far the only country in the world with a national ban on incineration following the passage of two landmark laws nearly 20 years ago, the Philippine Clean Air Act of 1999 and Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2000. Tayo ang pinakauna na bansa at only country lang na may national ban ng incineration. Unlike sa mga ibang countries, sa western countries, okay lang sa kanila to kasi malaking tulong nga daw sa kanila yung pag-burn ng mga basura, solid waste, parang pabawasan ang kalat sa kanilang kapeligiran. Pero, yun nga class, naaapektuhan naman yung layer ng atmosphere natin na na-discuss ko kanina. Well, dito sa Philippines, eh, meron tayong dalawang um, batas para dyan, Philippine Clean Air Act of 1999 and Ecological Waste Management Act of 2000. 
So the fourth form of disposal here class is the ocean dumping. When near to the ocean, solid waste can also be collected, loaded into barges, and taken to offshore dump sites. So this picture class is taken from Lupi Smalldives, in which Smalldives Sismo class will have a proper way on how to collect their um, trash or wastes sa community nila. So medyo madume. And then, um, ocean dumping is their only choice to lessen the garbage in their community. So, among all sorts of activities that pollute the ocean, dumping of garbage and other waste materials stands first in the list. Dumping involves depositing all the waste materials from factories and industries, tankers and ships and sewerage, waste materials into the ocean and seas. Some of the materials emitted by the industrial wastes and sewage wastes contain materials like mercury, cryolite, and DDT. Certain industrial wastage also includes radioactive materials. Even small amount of this substance and tends, it tends to have a negative effect. Okay, the scale and of the magnitude of the ocean dumping are not just a vast effect but our CU so huge that our entire civilization could be wiped out with an intensity of careless dumping. So, kung hindi natin iingatan ang mga karagatan natin at patuloy lang gagawin ito, ang pagtatapon ng mga basura, eh, talagang mawa-wipe out tayo ng minsanan ang, ang sambayan ng class. So, so far, wala pa naman akong nalalaman or na search na ocean dumping na na nang nangyayari dito sa Philippines pero yung mga naunang tatlo kanina is um <clears throat> meron okay so Quezon City is yung sanitary landfill okay tsaka may mga bago ulit may mga development ulit bagong programa or bagong project na ginagawa as a sanitary landfill so ayun class Here are the four R's of waste management. A guiding principle for CWTS or LPS students like you. Okay, so masyadong malalaki itong nandito ang caption. But let me read them all for you. Reduce, reuse, recycle, and repair. Common na yan sa ating class. Elementary pa lang tayo pinuturo na yan. Now, let's start with reduce. Avoid wasteful consumption of goods. Reuse. Whenever practicable, reuse useful items instead of throwing them away immediately. Recycle. The process of sorting out and using this waste into something beneficial. And repair. Have items repaired to make them functional and reusable. Yes. Okay, so good waste management follows the four R's, which is the reuse, Reduce, recycle, and repair, as well as avoiding illegal dumping and littering. So, do you know that the four R's can help us to find better ways to manage our litter? Okay, you can reduce by cutting down the amount of litter you produce. Try to buy products in bulk and um, that are made from recyclable materials and use canvas bags instead of plastic packets. Ito class, um, atas na natin ito sa binalaw, na diba, no more plastic bags. Ban na yan, nakaban na ang plastic bags. So, ang ginagamit ng mga, even sa mga grocery store or sa bayan is yung paper bag. Pwede yun class, or pwede din namang eco bag. Pwede din naman kung may iba yung kayo, pwede yun. Mas matibay pa nga na paglagyan ng mga pinapalengke natin, kahit basa yung pinalengke mo, pwede doon. Hindi ma pupunit. Unlike sa paper bag kasi, and unlike naman sa eco bag, kasi pag eco bag, syempre colored yan, mamamansyahan. So, yun lang naman yung advantage ng pag-use natin ng canvas bag or yung bayong na tinatawang. Another, you can reuse by finding ways to use things against, again that you would normally throw away. For sure, all types can, can be used to grow flowers and we can reuse plastic and glass bottles or pwede din glass yung gulong na na hindi na pwedeng gamitin, pwede mong gawing para siyang pot, lalo na yung mga plantitas and plantitos ngayon, pwede nilang gawin yun pag tanan ng mga halaman. 
another, yung mga bottles, yung mga 1.5 bottle natin na nabibili, yung mga Coca-Cola, Sprite, and iba pang drinks, uh, soft drinks, pwede natin ipunin yung glass, gamitin pa natin, paglagyan ng tubig, pagpalamigan ng tubig, ano pa, yung mga bottle ng mga margarine, something like that, pwede natin pag-storean yung glass ng mga iba-ibang liquid na a liquid na gamit like oil or many more. So, reuse. I-reuse natin if possible. Huwag natin i-throw away agad-agad. Kasi ang mga yan, especially plastic, matagal na pa na kung yung nag-google para ma mabulok. Okay? So, hindi lang isang taon yan. Maraming taon glass. So, yun. I-reuse natin if possible yung mga yan. Okay? The third R is the recycle. Recycle rubbish that cannot be reused. Collect all your rubbish, sort into a different categories like paper, glass, metal, and plastic. Then, put it in a recycle bins or take it to a buyback center or yung mga junk shop. Ayan. It can then be used to make a new products. Newspaper glass. Pwede natin i-separate yung mga, sabi ko nga, paper, glass, metal, plastic. Okay, i-recycle natin. Pwede natin silang gawing creative naman ng mga Pilipino. Class A, ito, ginagawa natin minsan pagkakitaan, yung pag-recycle. Nagagawa natin bago yung lumang mga gamit. So, ayon it takes creativity of one person lang, class A, to, to help our environment. Okay, to do the recycling. And the last one is repair. Okay? Kapag naman nakita mo na usable pa yung bagay nyo, huwag mo itatapon agad-agad, huwag mo itatapon agad sa ilog or what. For example, yung television, porket may limang taon na sa'yo at hindi na nag-on, nagtotopak-topak or nasisira na, sira na nga. Find a way to repair that. Ipa-repair mo pa. Pwede pa ang pakinabangan yan. Okay? Wag tapon agad-agad. Find ways on how to um, make them functional again. Okay? So, that is the four R's of waste management. So, let's talk about Republic Act number 9003 or the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2000. This law which primarily governs waste management in the Philippines. And one of its declared policies is to ensure the proper segregation, collection, transport, storage, treatment, and disposal of solid waste through the formulation and adoption of the best environmental practice in ecological waste management, excluding incineration. Here are the causes of solid waste. Basahin ko muna isa-isa, then we discuss ko later on. We have the domestic, industrial, agriculture, commercial, and municipal. Okay, so let's start with domestic waste. Domestic waste has become one of the most significant causes of severe damage to the rural eco environment because of the large amounts of waste discharge and improper disposal. Second, is pagsamahin na natin class yung commercial and industrial waste. Organizations are likely to produce waste, paper, food wastes, and packaging materials. Yan, yung mga ginagamit ng mga um, uh, famous na mga food chain, yung mga Jollibee, something like that. Or yung mga binibili natin sa store ng mga biscuits. So yan, yung packaging materials nila. Commercial and industrial wastes, yung mga yan. The types of industrial waste generated includes cafeteria garbage, dirt and gravel masonry and concrete, scrap metals, trash, oil, solvent chemicals, weed grass and trees, even wood and scrap plumber, and similar wastes. Let's talk about agricultural waste naman. So, these are generated by activities pertaining to agriculture and livestock, such as containers of fertilizers, pesticides, feeds, remnants, and harvest and manure. 
And lastly, it's more commonly known as trash or garbage. It is consists of everyday items we use and then we throw away, such as the product packaging, grass, clippings, furniture, clothing, bottles, food scraps, newspapers, appliances, paint, and even batteries. This comes from our home, schools, hospitals, and businesses. Punishable Acts under RA 9003. Okay, or it is an act for an ecological solid waste management program creating the necessary institutional mechanisms and incentives, declaring acts prohibited and providing penalties appropriating funds, therefore, and for other purposes. So, dumping waste. Domestic waste includes household objects, commercial waste, industrial waste, non-hazardous waste. We also have hospital waste. Hospital instruments, ayan. This includes yung mga gloves, um, face mask, ano pa, yung mga needles and syringes. Pathological specimens, most commonly are blood, urine, saliva, spatum, feces, semen, and other body fluids, as well as yung mga tissues kapag yung mga nao-operahan, yung mga nakukuha nilang tissues. Syringe, patient's diaper, so punishable yung mga yan kapag dinamp nila itong mga waste, whether sa isang sanitary landfill, open dumping, or sa ocean dumping. And we also have the last one here, agricultural waste, such as vegetables and fruits, yung mga crops, residues. And we have three different environmental laws class. First one here is the green laws, terrestrial laws. Those that deals with protection, conservation, utilization, and development of forests, other land-based natural resources, and wildlife. Green is the color used since land and forests are generally supposed to be green. Land-based wildlife is also considered forests as their habitat. Thus, they are included under a green law. Next, blue laws or marine and aquatic resource law refers to law which deals with the protection, conservation, and utilization of waters, marine life, and aquatic resources. This encompasses both inland waters such as river, lakes, streams, and seas, and the ocean, whether part of our country's territory or not. And the last different environmental law is the brown laws or area laws refer to the law and rules which deals with pollution control and the regulation of activities which could affect the environment. Okay? So, okay. Hazardous and toxic waste and chemicals included dito. Solid waste management and rules on the conduct of environmental impact assessment. So we have an act for this brown law, such as the Commonwealth Act Number 141, the Public Land Act, and we also have Republic Act Number 6667, Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Law of 1988, and the last one is Republic Act Number 7160, the Local Government Code. 